So here's your quick recap of today's lesson on Pythagorean theorem. Um, so, but before we can dig into Pythagorean theorem, uh, we should review some basic ideas related to the triangle. So there are different ways to classify triangles. We can classify them based on sides, and we can classify them based on the uh, angles that they contain. So um, first off, uh, we have a scalene tri uh, triangle. So you may remember from elementary school that scalene triangles are triangles that have no sides of the same length. So it's indicated here in the diagram by these marks going across of the, the sides. So for instance, any sides that have the same number of these marks on them will be of equal length. So this scalene triangle has none, no side with the same number of marks on them, so that's telling me it's, uh, it's a scalene. Over here, uh, the isosceles triangle, uh, the, this diagram shows me that I have two sides of equal length, and, uh, and that makes sense because that is the definition of an isosceles triangle, uh, the fact that it has two sides of equal length and a third side that is different from that other length. And lastly, equilateral triangles. The equilateral triangle will have all three sides uh, of equal length. So when we classify triangles based on their angles, uh, then we can we're just look it's a you know we can look at the triangles from a different point of view. So for example, an acute triangle uh, is defined as a triangle where none of the interior angles here are greater than uh, 90 degrees. They're all less than 90 degrees. A right triangle or a right angle triangle contains a 90 degree angle and you can tell that it's a 90 degree angle because it's got this little box in one of the corners that indicates that. And an obtuse triangle is a triangle where one of the interior angles is going to be greater than 90 degrees. So Pythagorean theorem really relates only to the right triangle. So before we get into the details of that, let's remind ourselves of some more details that are specific to right triangles. And the first one is the fact that um, the side that is opposite this right angle has a special name. So if I look at my right angle, and I go to the side directly opposite of that, and this, it should be the longest side. And that longest side of a right triangle has a special name. It's called the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to label it as H to show that it is, in fact, the hypotenuse. And a couple things that are important for us to know that the hypotenuse is the name that we give to that a side that's across from the right angle and that it's always the longest side. Okay, so uh, that's good to know because if you're ever solving a problem involving Pythagorean theorem and you're solving for the hypotenuse and you get an answer for the length of the hypotenuse that is less than either of the two other sides, then you know you've made a mistake but because the hypotenuse should always be the longest of the three sides. So a couple little pointers to keep in mind as we move forward. Another thing to keep in mind is that the right triangle isn't always going to be oriented in the same way. It may appear different than uh, what we saw in the previous diagram. So a good way of going about figuring out where the hypotenuse is, again, is not to look for the longest side, but to look for that right angle and then to find the side that is opposite of that. Right? And so if you go simply by looking at where the longest side is, some triangles, it can be really, really tough to see where that is. For example, this yellow triangle here, it's kind of tough. I mean, I guess it does look longer, but sometimes it's not as obvious where the longest side is. So we can be sure where that longest side is by looking at where that right angle is and going across. So before we introduce some calculations that we can do with um, path using Pythagorean theorem, I want to talk to you about the uh, how the relationship was determined to begin with. So there was a Greek mathematician by the name of Pythagoras who had a special interest in right triangles, and he did different studies, different experiments, and 
uh, what he eventually came up with was pretty interesting and we still use it to this day otherwise you wouldn't be learning it so let's take a look at that so um, uh, let's look at take a look at what he would have looked at um, so when I look at the side of this triangle right here, I can see that it has a side length of three. I count three squares, so one, two, three. Um, now, but if I look at the total area of the square that is formed by that side, then I see that the area is nine squared. And so another way to look at that is to say, well, I have a three by three squared, and that's three squared. So I'm going to write that down and I'm going to keep that in mind. Uh, now let's look at the other triangle side. And here it is right here, one, two, three, four units in length. So I'm going to write that out just so that I can remember that. And if I look at the area of the square formed by that side, then it ends up being 16 unit, square units. And how did I get that? Well, I said 4 times 4, or in other words, 4 squared. Okay. Now, last but not least, I've got my third side, the hypotenuse. And so my hypotenuse, here's my right angle, so it makes sense that this last side is a hypotenuse because it's both across from the right angle and it also seems to be the longest side because I can count out my 5 squares. So... If I look at uh, the square formed by that, it has an area of 25 square units. And, um, you know, how, where did I get that? Well, I said 5 squared. So Pythagoras, uh, when he studied right triangles, he found that time and time again, no matter which right triangle that he found, uh, that he looked at, that he studied in the same way, he always found that if he took the square of the two smaller sides and added them together, so in this case the 16 and the 9, it would always equal the square of the longest side, the hypotenuse, the 25. And that's true here too, because 16 plus 9 is in fact equal to 25. So we're able to apply that today uh, in lots of useful ways, like in construction, um, and in all, all whole sorts of everyday life things that, uh, and we're going to take a look at how to calculate those. So to recap what Pythagoras said, um, if we are to take the square of the two shorter sides and add them together, so a squared plus b squared, a and b being the shorter sides, then that adds up to the square of the longest side, so c squared, and that is indeed Pythagorean theorem. So let's take a look at a short video so that we can visualize this in, in, uh, in a concrete way. So in this video we can see that um, all of the water in each of the two smaller squares, the area that they make that they are able to fill, when this thing this device is turned over, all of that water can go in and fill the entire area uh, formed by the length of the hypotenuse. Let's see that in reverse. So there it is, Pythagorean theorem.